Carpenter's Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. 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 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And why was I glad? Because this is the place where we have an opportunity to praise his name. So I can hear you. Praise his name. Glory be to God. We can call him Jehovah. We can call him Lion of Judah. We can call him our healer. We can call him boldly our deliverer. We can call him our father. Can I hear you give him praise? If you are glad to be in the house of God, can I hear you give him praise? Glory be to God. What an awesome God we have. What a mighty father he is to us. What an amazing king he is. There is no God like our God. There is no king like our king. There is no one we can count on. No one we can rely on like our father. Nobody heals our bodies like he does. No one provides for us like he does. No one gives us peace like he does. No one is always there in the midnight hour like he is which is why we are glad in the congregation of the righteous we give him praise glory be to our king hallelujah 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 and one more loud shout of praise let our praises rise unto him let our praises rise like a sweet smelling sacrifice. Let our praises rise unto him. <laughs> Let our praises rise unto him. Let our praises rise unto our King, unto our Lord. Let our praises rise unto him. Let our praises rise unto him. Let our praises rise unto him. Let our praises rise. Let them rise to his throne. Let them make him get up and begin to dance. Let them make him get up and begin to do a jiggle. Let them make him say, these are my children. And I can hear them praise him. Let our praises rise. We shouldn't be silent anymore. Not just about our needs. Not just about our confessions. But we should be liberal with our praise. We should be extravagant with our praise. Glory be to God. So let our praises rise to our King. If he has been Jehovah anything to you. If he has been Jehovah anybody to you. If he has been Jehovah Jireh to you. If he has been Rafa to you, if he is your Rafika, if he is your Shalom, if he is your Shah, if he is your Sikadu, if he has been any Jehovah to you, let your praises rise. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. <laughs> we are extravagant with our praise. We roll out our praise. We lift up our hands in total surrender and adoration to you. We declare there is no God like you. We declare there is no one like you. No one loves us like you do. No one assures us like you do. No one keeps us like you do. No one provides for us like you do. No one protects us like you do. When a thousand fall on this side and ten thousand fall on the other side, you keep us safe in the middle. No one protects us like you do. Our praises rise to you this morning. Extravagantly, our praises rise to you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Our Father of lights, we worship you constant and consistent God we worship you 
promise keeper. We worship you. <laughs> hey, we give you the praise. Shepherd of our souls, bishop of our lives, superintendent over everything we do. We give you praise. <laughs> keeper, our caretaker, our nourisher, our provider, healer of our bodies, <laughs> restorer. Oh, all the years the canker worm has stolen. You are the one who restores. And you restore in abundance. You restore in more than enough. You restore every single area. You restore even places we didn't know that there was room for restoration. That is who you are. So our praises rise to you this morning. Like a sweet smelling sacrifice. Your people love you, Lord. Your people love you just for who you are. Your people worship you just for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. <laughs> we give you praise. Can I hear someone's praise this morning? If how loud you shouted, I showed you that God be here. If it was how loud you shouted, if it was, then I showed you that God would hear. Let your praise rise to the Father. what's going on but I'm just excited in my spirit God is a faithful God God is a good God there is no regret in loving him there is no regret in serving him there is no regret in living for him thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah amen and amen Amen and amen. Ooh, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready for the word of God? You ready? You don't sound ready. Are you ready for the word of God? Like, are you really ready for the word of God? All right. Who loves the word of God? Who can't do without the word of God? Who knows the word is all you need? Amen and amen. So today, I believe we conclude our message. My faith, like my father's part two. Romans 4, 16 to 18. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. We said when we talked about my faith, like my father's, the father we're referring to is who? And it's not who? Because Abraham, though he's called the father of our faith, he got his inspiration. The source of his faith was God. Amen. And we know God is a God that of faith. Um... So we said in our faith, we should exhibit traits like, like father and like son. We define faith from Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. From the Phillips, now faith means putting all our confidence in the things we hope for. It means being certain of things we cannot see. So what are the two things we said so far about my faith? 
like my father's. What was the first thing we said? I don't want any pastor to answer. What was the first thing we say? Okay, service over. Has the professor ever walked out on you in class before? In school? <laughs> if you ask a question and you didn't, shows you didn't do your homework, the prof will just, so if a prof can do it. So what was the first thing? I'm gone. <laughs> So why did you talk before? I had to threaten you with going. <laughs> Go on, say it again. Somebody here? Was it you? Who said it? It wasn't you. Yeah, don't you? Who said it? Some... I faith recognizes that God is present even when all hope is lost. What was the second thing we said? That's a soprano. <laughs> say it louder. My faith recognizes that God who is present has no limits. Okay, professor is back in class. All right, let me give you the third point. So what we're going to start with today. My faith speaks the invisible as reality. Glory be to God. My faith speaks the invisible as reality. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Everybody say calls those things which do not exist as though they did. From the ERV, as the scriptures say, I have made you a father of many nations. This is true before God, the one Abraham believed, the God who gives life to the dead. And speaks of things, speaks of things that don't exist as if they are real. Faith speaks of things that don't exist as if they are real. From the Amplified, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God whom he believed, who gives life to the dead. And speaks of the non-existent, they're non-existent, non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Note that my point did not say, my faith speaks the invisible into reality. That's not what I said. I didn't say my faith speaks the invisible into reality. I said my faith speaks the invisible as reality. There is a thin line. This point is probably one of the most important points you need to get to walk by faith. Because this is where a lot of us fall flat on our faces. My faith speaks the invisible as if it already exists, as a reality. My faith doesn't bring it into reality. You follow me, church? Let's look at two quick case studies. First case study is God. Because this is my faith. Are you personalizing it? Whose faith is this? Good. This is in Kechi's faith. Whose faith is this? This is my faith as my father's. So let's look at God. Let's look at the very first time we see or hear the concept of faith in the Bible. When is that? Genesis. Genesis what? Genesis 1 what? 1 what? Hmm? Somebody read Genesis from verse 1. Quickly, somebody. Pastor, do you have it open? In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. What verse are you in now? What verse is that? Verse 3. Then God said, What did he say? 
Everybody said that God said, let there be light. And there was light. And what happened throughout the chapter? Then God said, then God said, right? Hebrew scholars, and I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I had to do some studying. Hebrew scholars generally say that that verse is not meant to be, let there be light, and there was light. It's meant to be, light be, light was. What's the difference? And God said, light be, and light was. Now, Hebrew scholars also say that every other place you see, and there was, let, then God said, let there be, and there was. That it is only here, and in verse 14, 15. What's in verse 14, 15, Pastor? Because you have a voice that doesn't need microphone. She does not need micro. They can hear her. <laughs> then God said, let there be light and firmament. So stop. That's the section where he created the greater light and the lesser light. Hebrew scholars say, listen, listen, that in verse 3 and verse 14, 15, the word used or the expression used is different from every other than God said. What's the difference? Every other one gives the impression of something created. But this one gives the impression of something called out that already existed. Listen to me. Let me read it again. Neither here nor in verses 14 to 18 is an original creative act implied. A different word is used. The sense is he made to appear or he made visible. So the light was there, but he made it visible. He didn't create it from the beginning. But he created the, wind, the, the every other thing he created. The animals, the whatever, 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 everything. So the first time we see faith, we see God saying, light become visible. Light be. And light was. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Faith, your faith. Calls the invisible as reality. It means your faith believes that thing is there already. Your faith is not trying to create it. Your faith is not trying to bring it out. Have I lost you? Let me read it again. And that first portion I read came from Schofield. Neither here nor in verses 14 to 18 is an original creative act implied. A different word is used. That word means he made it to appear. He made it visible. Spurgeon tells us that it's meant to be light be and light was. Follow me. Let's look at, before we get there, just follow me. Let's look at Genesis 1. That same three. I want to read it from the CEV version. God said, I command light to shine. That's the translation from the CEV. I command light to shine. Not I create light now for the first time. I command it to shine. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Case study 2, which would explain this better. 2 Kings 6, 14 to 18. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear. 
for those who are with us. Everybody say those who are with us. Are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Yesterday we had generation shift. And we had another explosion of about 350 something young adults. Everywhere was full. This tent was full. Two teen tent was full. The foyer was full. It was literally an overflow. If I was to describe the two tents, listen, listen, I would say those who were in, who are in the adult tent, let's say I, I'm calling Pashola, Pashola or somebody who's not here, we're in a generation shift now. In the adult tent, those who are in the adult tent, follow me, are more than those who are in the teen tent. That would make sense, right? 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 Talk to me. Good. If the meeting had started and just the adult tent was occupied, but we were still expecting people to come to the teen tent, right? So there was nobody visible in the teen tent, but I'm expecting them to come there. I would say to the person, those who are in the teen tent, in the adult tent, are more than those who will show up in the teen tent, correct? But since they were all full, what I said in the same tense, in the same sentence, was those who are here are more than those who are there. They're all here. Give me three ushers on this side, quickly. Quickly, move fast, I don't have time. Three, four. Four people, four. Quiet, join, four. I just need four people here. And I need two. Two, two choir members here. I want two in white. Two choir members in white here. Four people there. Okay, two. Four, I need one more people. How many, two? Where are the ushers now? Come on, guys. I don't want you wearing white. I want two people. I want them different. Sorry, I reject you. <laughs> I want two. There are no ushers in this. Chibu, see? Chima, it's okay. No, nobody will come here. Climb. All right. So now, these are those... Oh, I had the wrong colors upside down. Okay, sorry. Doesn't matter. These are those kind of now. Yeah, I don't bite. These are those who are with us. These are those who are with who are more and them are less. What realm are these people in? Huh? Physical, visible, natural realm, right? What realm were these people in? No? They were in the spiritual, supernatural, invisible realm. So taking a cue from the example I just gave you with the adult tent and teen tent, what should Elisha have said? The way you would normally say it. Those who are with them hmm, are less than those who we believe will be with us. Because they were not in the physical realm. He was not seeing them. And then like many of us, he would have said, so let us begin to pray. Oh Lord, please send the people. Send them now, quickly, and overwhelm these people who are about to kill us. But notice that Elisha used the same tense. Elisha did not change his tense when he was speaking about the natural realm and when he was speaking about the supernatural realm. It was the same to him. Elisha spoke of what he could see physically and what he knew was there, but he could not yet see as if they all existed on the same plane. There was no difference to him. He didn't talk of this in the future. He didn't say it is going to come. Listen to me because this is where many of us fall flat. Where faith is concerned. His eyes could not see them. But he knew by the promises of God they were there. 
eyes could see these ones. And they were talking. It was loud. The symptoms in the body. The lack. The problems. They were shouting. He didn't speak of his covenant promises as if it was yet to appear. He spoke of it as though it already existed. Look at the sentence again. Look at the tense. It did not change. For those who are with us, they are here with us. They are here with us. Your husband is here with you. Your children, they are here. They are not coming. You haven't gotten it yet. You still haven't gotten it. They are here. Your healing is here. Your healing is here. Your healing is here. It's not coming. Your abundance is here. Your account is empty. Your abundance is right here. It's not coming. Those who are here with us now, though our eyes cannot see them, they are more, they are bigger, they are eternal, they are secure, more than those who are with them, who our eyes, our feelings, our hands, our nose can record. That is faith. That is what will make a woman with no man in sight go and make a wedding gown and pay full price for it and tell the person making the gown that I will invite you to my wedding. It is sometime next year. And even a cockroach hasn't said hello. Why? She knows he's here. Sometimes the greatest acts of faith are done in the simplest ways. But they reveal what you know. What you know, you know. What do you know about what you cannot yet see? What are you waiting for when you already have it? I can hear the engine of your brain cranking. It's cranking, it's cranking. Release your brain and open your heart. That's the same problem the servant had. So what did Elisha pray for him? Lord, open his eyes. Elisha did not pray, Lord, send an army. He could have prayed that. Elisha did not pray, oh Lord, please, help us and rescue us before it's too late. Elisha just said, open his eyes so that he can really see the truth about your promises. So he can understand what Christ has already done for him in your case. And his eyes open and voila, truly everywhere was surrounded by the armies of God. When that cancer is shouting in the body of a believer, the blood of Jesus has spoken already and it was a louder voice. The point is, can you hear it? You see, this is something that I have had to continually renew my mind about. I'm speaking about my faith. And I'm being naked to you in these meetings about my faith. I wasn't always at a point where I could speak the invisible as reality. Because I'm a very logical person. If you make a first class in, in engineering, it's likely that your brain works like computer. So that computer brain used to worry sometimes. Sometimes it's just, but what are you really saying? So you have to continually renew your mind. And one of the ways you do that is to get yourself a faith accountability partner. If you're married to somebody who 
believes God, is a believer like you, or at least a half believer. If he's caught a believer, then maybe look for a friend. You need a faith accountability partner. You need somebody who will check your speech. So when like the servants, you say, Alas, master, what shall we do? The person will say, hey, 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 stop. Have you forgotten what God has already done for us? Have you forgotten who you are in Christ? Don't talk like that. Those who are with you, they are more than what you are seeing now. That's what my husband and I do for each other. Sometimes in those days, less now, hardly ever now. But in those days, I would say something. He would just quietly say, and I agree with you on that. Hey, I'll say, please, please, please. Withdraw it, withdraw it. I say, no, you don't want to withdraw first. When you withdraw, then I'll withdraw my agreement. So when he tells me, I'll agree with you on that, I'll suddenly realize that thing I said, I don't want agreement on it. And it begins to align your speech. Some of you just talk. You think being naked and not ashamed before your wife or your husband is to talk rubbish. Me, I can just be myself in front of my wife. I'm not in church. You see, Jesus used to follow you everywhere. It's not only in this church. He used to follow you even inside the toilet. He's there. So when you think you're alone in the toilet, sitting on that seat, doing that thing, and you now say, ah, but Jesus, actually, between me and you, this thing worry you. This problem is too big. It really wants to kill me. At least my wife is not here to hear me. Not the one she'll hear me now. She'll be telling me talk by faith. Dummy, the person who's supposed to hear you is actually hearing you. Being naked and ashamed before your husband or your wife is not talking rubbish. Find yourself a faith accountability partner. If you're not married or your spouse is no more here, find a friend, find a sister, find a brother, someone that can check what you say. My faith that brings victories speaks the invisible as a reality. I didn't tell you that God didn't create light. In case you're looking at me thinking I said that. I said at that time that we see in Genesis 1, 3, he said light be shine out of darkness. A different tense was used. Begin to call those things that be not as though they were and they will appear. They have been there. They have been there. That job is there. You keep talking on employment, you will never see it. It has been there, but you will never see it. And I'm not cursing you. Poverty will finish you and you will finish inside poverty. And it won't be because the abundance was not there. It is your mouth killing you. You are speaking with intelligence and not spirit. And you are actually speaking like a dummy. A spiritual dummy. Say after me, my faith. Say it, say it over and over again, my faith. Thank you, my faith. Say it again, my faith. Speaks. The invisible as reality. As reality. When you reckon with the visible realm, you find yourself shouting, Alas, Master, what shall we do? Your prayers will always be cries for help. Your prayers will always be desperate cries for help. You think that shows dependency on God? It doesn't. It shows that you don't know that you are a son of God. Do you think praying prayers that always cry out for help show that you are dependent on God? No, it shows that you are a slave. A son will just go and take what is already his. Before he sees it, I'm going to my father's closet to bring out a watch to wear today. He knows it's there. Is a son. I want you today to kill the future tense where your faith is concerned. Kill it. Faith is now. I said faith is now. Am I talking to the Carpenters Church? 
You sound like you're hearing the message of faith for the first time. It's now. You call the invisible as if it is as a reality that is already here. That is why when you say, I am healed, resisting sickness and disease, do you know the power in that statement? When there are symptoms in your body. But you know, the more you say that slowly, 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 your body will just begin to align. You won't even know. There was a time when just walking was a huge challenge for me. Just walking. Then airport trips were problematic. There's a brother who is in church who, who used to walk in, your husband, who used to walk in an airline. Then he saw me on one of those trips. Very polite, respectful brother. He helped me and just did like he didn't say anything. I could barely get up the, what's that thing called? The bus. You remember that day? The bus that they used, I, I could walk, walk from uh, airport terminal to plane. That one is a liner. And I did not like wheelchair. So they have to put me in the bus. So this brother saw me, oh, this is how I was coming in the bus. That was his pastor. He just quietly held me onto the bus until today. He never spoke to me about it. And I know he remembers. <laughs> held me up. I went at the bus and went. Then in the airport, it's drama. Now, when we are going like to Abuja, ask Tola and Osi, I'll be, you should be coming now. I'll just be flexing in the airport, feeling, and each step I take, I remember. Each step I remember. I was telling OC yesterday during generation shift. I had to get to the office twice. And without thinking, I just came from here, walked all the way down. My car was around to the office, turned around, walked back shortly after I turned around again. It looked like a normal thing to anybody that saw me. But I gave it to her as testimony. I said, ah, daughter, I walked twice so, from auditorium to office and back without breaking a sweat without gasping. I don't even know when that happened. I don't even know when that happened. Before. To walk from here to toilet now is drama now. The reason can carry me every five minutes. When you keep speaking what is, it is. When you keep speaking what you cannot see, but what you know is, that is what you will see. Hebrews 11, 1 from the Amplified says, Now faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Church, it is not revealed to the senses. I say it is not revealed to the senses. That healing is not revealed to the senses, but it's real. That job is not revealed to the senses, but it's real. That baby, he, that baby is not revealed to the senses. That means even a test will not show it, but it's real. I'm not talking about denial and beginning to take hormones to pad yourself and your stomach will grow. No. You just speak it because it is. And it is what you will see. Quietly. Light be. And light was. Light is time. Come out of darkness. Begin to shine. Make yourself visible. Baby, make yourself visible. Husband, make yourself visible. Job, make yourself visible. Because I know you are here. Make yourself in this nature. I want to see you physically. Because I know you are here. Not Lord, please. When will my baby come? Lord, when, when will my baby come? When will my husband come? Li you see, it's very little. 
You might say, Pastor, you are stretching it. It's better to stretch it too. And stretch it in the right way. Say, Pastor, you are, no, you don't, it's not really that important. That's the beginning of your problem. So some of you last week when the choir was here, singing, and the roof is up. The roof is up. The roof is up. It's up. The roof is up. The roof is up. I can see the roof is up. I said the roof is up. And I look up and I see the sky. I see the crane. I see the clouds. Then your brain begins to shut down. I say, ah, the one for this church, in fact, it looks small. The roof is up. But I saw the sky now. If a roof is up, will you see this guy? Lord, open their eyes so they will see. So they will see that the roof is already up. I don't know what realm you're operating. I don't know to what realm you're dancing, but my faith takes its root in the spiritual realm. If you cannot function in the spiritual realm, you can never function by faith. To be chance and luck and the mercy of God and word of knowledge. Somebody here, every day is not somebody here. Some things you have to somebody here yourself. When you speak the invisible as reality. The roof is up. What do you think you say when you say, and we call you finished. Dissect what you are saying. And we say you will be finished. That's not what we say. Every line in that confession was written carefully. We call you finished. We call those things that are not revealed to the senses. But we know they are real. To do this, you have to be ready to look and sound stupid. Therein lies the problem for a lot of us who are very concerned about how we look. You have to be ready to look and sound stupid. Were you ever a child who had an imaginary friend? Or you had a child or knew a child that had one? You know how that child does? Some children have imaginary friends. Okay. Okay, Mr. Boo Boo. Mr. Boo Boo, let's go and eat. And I'm watching your child, wondering if your child has a brain problem. Sit down there, Mr. Boo Boo. And your child will sit down with Mr. Boo Boo. Take your egg, Mr. Boo Boo. Should I help you put it in your mouth? And you're watching your child. Should I call the child doctor? Your child is convinced Mr. Boo Boo exists. You cannot tell your child there's no me. You just begin to pray that he or she will grow out of it. But you know, some children know their Mr. Boo Boo like their friends. When they're going to sleep, good night, Mr. Boo Boo. Sleep well, Mr. Boo Boo. You won't be Mr. Boo Boo. Some of you start binding devils. Your child may just be a very creative child. My first daughter, who is a designer, there are people she used to talk to but it was not madness. There are people who should be creating them, drawing them, and should be discussing with them. To be resolved, be creative. You have to be ready to be like that. Who is the Mr. Boo Boo in your life that you are calling that nobody else can see? Who is the Mr. Boo Boo that you know is real? But your senses do not re reveal it. You cannot win victories as a believer with your head. You have to pack your brain. And like I told you last week, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. You have to live by faith. There's no other way. <sighs> 
2 Corinthians 4, 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what was what is written, I believed, and therefore I speak. We also believe, and therefore we speak. So that's, that's the third point, my faith. But you got this, didn't you? Huh? Go back and listen and listen and listen and listen and listen again. And keep renewing your mind. And get yourself a faith accountability. But this is one of the major keys of your faith victory. What are you saying? You are here for the carpenter's table. Spiritual technology. Apply the spiritual technology. What are you saying? What you're saying is creating your world. It's not, there's no demon. There's no hard love. There's no hardship. Even when you think you are speaking by faith. I believe. I believe that my money is coming. My money is coming. That's not faith. Should I continue? It is not faith. The money is coming from where? You sit down at home, you will not walk, you will not do anything. My money is coming. I believe it's coming. My money is coming. Get off your behind and go and walk. Why will you go and continue? Your money is here. It is here. Coming is future tense. It is not faith when it is future tense. My healing is coming. It's not faith. Sounds good, but it is not faith. Faith calls those things that do not exist as though they already exist. That is faith. And there are a lot of frustrated Christians who think they are living by faith, but they are not. Lift your hands to the Father. Lift your hands to the Father, please. God is positioning us in this church for a new level and a new season. And the only way we can get there is by faith. He's given us a reset a new beginning in our thinking, a reset in our speech. What you're saying is killing you. What you're saying is impoverishing you. What you're saying is increasing the confusion around you. What you're saying is doing more damage than you realize. What do you call that your son that has very problematic behavior? What do you call him? And you wonder why that behavior persists? What do you call that your daughter? Do you call what is not revealed to your senses as though it already is? What do you call your wife? What do you call your husband? You're actually cementing the problem. <laughs> you're giving it life. What you're saying is killing you. What you're saying is impoverishing you and then you come to church and you think I'm living by faith faith takes its root in the spiritual realm that's why if you're not a believer you cannot live by faith if you're not born of the spirit you cannot it's impossible But when you are born of the spirit, actually your citizenship is in the spiritual realm. Your language is in the spiritual realm. Your provision is in the spiritual realm. Your healing is in the spiritual realm. <clears throat> and when like Elisha, you know it's as real as the physical realm, it shows up. 
it is made visible. It manifests. That's the word. That's the word we used so many years ago. It manifests. Same thing. Light, manifest yourself. Husband, manifest yourself. I know you're here. You see that expression, open your eyes. Sometimes you're praying. You're just praying in the spirit. You're praying in the spirit. And suddenly you jump up. I have it. I got it. It's here. I know it. Nothing has changed in the physical. What has happened? Your eyes have been opened. You suddenly get it. But chewing, chewing gum in front of CNN will not help you. Visiting Domino's Pizza every day will not help you. You dance in the spiritual realm. You romance with Jesus. You ask him to make that realm more real to you than the physical realm. Then when that realm is real to you, you can look up and say, the roof is up. And you know it's up. And when your brain wants to say how, Mark chapter 4, there was a man, a certain man, he just planted his seed, scattered his seed, and he went to bed. The Bible says he did not know how. The only two times the man shows up is to sow and to reap. So you sow with your words and you go to bed. All I know is the roof is up. And like that man, the Bible says the kingdom of God is like that man. I just go to sleep. How can I have a sleepless night? I'm sowing. The roof is up. I'm calling what I know already is. And one day, the man was called see your harvest. That, that, those seeds you scattered, see them. The same man appeared again for his second job description to reap. What are you saying? What realm are your battles rooted in? I use that word battles loosely. Some of your battles are rooted in the physical realm. So you think it is by fasting. Let me tell you this. Listen very well. What you are saying is more important than your fasting. What you are saying. If you like fast for 90 days and talk rubbish, nothing will happen. Quote me anyway. I say it again. If you like fast for 90 days with only water and juice. If you are still alive at the end of those nights, no, no, nothing. And don't change your speech. Don't begin to speak the invisible as reality. Nothing will happen. All that will happen is an angel will appear to you and tell you the next one should be 120 days. You have entered physical realm now. It has entered works. You are rooting your victory in your physical realm. If you like, sow seed as bribe to God. Give big money to the church. And don't change the way you're speaking. Nothing will happen. And you get from, I've been sowing seed. I've been giving. Nothing will happen. An angel will appear to you and tell you, give more. You have entered physical realm. The faith that is the God kind of faith has its root in the spiritual realm. No other realm works. Eyes have been opened this morning. I know it. Eyes have been opened this morning. Great change is taking place. For as we've come into this auditorium, we've come into our new season. We've come into new levels of anointings, new levels of grace, new levels of manifestations, new levels of maturity and revelation. Levels that actually exceed our imagination. 
that go beyond what we ever thought. We'll begin to see moves of the Spirit of God like never before. But our mouths have got to line up. Lift your hands and worship him. Worship him and thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise, please. Give him praise. Give him praise. Don't stop, please. Give him praise. His presence is so tangible here. Give him praise. The way Elisha prayed for the servant, I pray for you that your eyes will be open to the spiritual realm. That your eyes will be open to what is already yours in Christ Jesus. And then the struggle will leave. The struggle will leave. And you stand confident in what is already yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.